So for a lot of you, you would have seen my previous video on about how to set up a native SegWit address, use Ledger, pad inscriptions, uh, and also okay. use Matrica, uh, Matrica sorry, for verification. So I suppose I actually want to take a, um, a step back and run a bit more over uh, UTXOs and kind of management to make people feel a bit more comfortable about when they're sending things around how does that actually work? Because there's still some concern about accidentally spending your inscriptions. So I'm back in my ledger. I've got my UTXOs here because I'm selecting my UTXO tab. I've sent these in from another wallet. And what we can see is, and we'll just run over quickly. So this is the output, the UTXO. You right click here, copy transaction output. And you'll be able to see what lives at that output. Now, what I mean, when I say lives, I know there's 8,416 sats that are inside this UTXO. And remember, UTXO is basically a way for the network to know, hey, this can be spent from this address. So if I copy this transaction output, go to ordinals.com and paste it in, we'll be able to find out a bit more information. And we'll look at another one after this as well. So we can see that there is a inscription here and typically inscription, well, the inscription should sit on the very first sat so we've got to imagine this is a range and we'll look at a drawing in a section. And if we click on this one here, we'll be able to confirm that because it says offset zero. So we know this inscription lives at the very start of this 8,416. Now it's offset zero because uh, it's indexed from zero, these sats. But let's look at a picture to kind of make a bit more sense of that as well. So we'll click over here and I'll actually change this one really quickly. So what we're going to do is our UTXO, as we saw, 8,416 sats. So let's imagine this is 8,416 sats here. The inscription lives right at the start there. And this is the, the remaining sats, but it's, it's all kind of one range because we can see here, we can go back, it's just one sat range. So we know the, the ordinal is living on the very first one of that range and the rest is just sats there for padding. So this is what it looks like here. In some other examples, and we'll copy this one here, go back across, it might be that the UTXO has two ranges, and that's completely fine. There might be three, four, and it could continue to go up. So all that means is that this inscription here lives at the start here, and there's a range there. So we see if we click on this one here, we can see there's a range of 1491 sats. And the second range, there's 8,509. So in total, they add up to 10,000. And if we click on the inscription, it's sitting at zero. So once again, this is how it works. A UTXO, the green barrier signifying this UTXO, which has 10,000 sats. But inside that, the inscription is living on that very first sat. It's still in that range there. And then there's a second range as well. So th the reason why I'm running over this now is because if you understand how this, this premise works, you understand a bit more and feel a bit com more comfortable about sending things. So we're going to imagine that I'm going to send this to one of my other addresses. And what we're going to do is go through a couple of different scenarios. So first of all, make sure all your UTXOs are locked so you can't accidentally spend them. And we're going to unfreeze or frozen, I should say. So this first scenario is we select this here. Now, nothing else is unfrozen, so we can't send it by accident. So you're quite safe. So if we go to send, I'll just copy my sending address. Just go to MPC. And as we can see, it's kind of gone at nine sats per VBuy. I'm just gonna go, and I just round it up a little bit so it's a little bit faster. This is based on the network at the time. So if you'd sent it at that, it should have been fine as is. But as we saw, we selected one uh, UTXO, so one, uh, one input. And this is the input here. So remember we had 8,416 sats. And then what we're doing is we're gonna send that out. And this is the receiving address, but you notice how the receiving address is only receiving 7,216 7, sats. And that's because the rest is going to phase. But, and I wonder if it'll go back for me, brilliant. But as we talked about earlier, our inscription lives at the very start, so we need to make sure we're not spending that. But if this is the first in, it's the first out. So we know that when the UTXO is received, the 7,216 sats, the only difference we're looking at 
is it will be like this. So all of a sudden, you don't have as much in that first range. So it's completely fine to do that. It'll just be a little bit smaller. And I'm fine with my uh, inscription only having, well, so my UTXO only having 7,216 sats. And if I was to go create con transaction, finalize the signing, sign, I'd need to get my ledger, sign, and away it goes. But that would essentially, once again, it would send 8,416 sats, first in, first out, and first in was the inscriptions at the very start, so I'm feeling comfortable. It'd be the first out there, and the rest goes to the fees. So the it's 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 quite simple in the process. If you think about it like this, the inscription lives at zero at the very start, first in, first out. All right, let's run over another scenario because let's look at uh, if you're adding extra to it. So we'll go back to my UTXOs and we'll just freeze this one again. So I've sent myself some Bitcoin to an address. That's uh, if you go receive, I've just sent it to an address that's here and it's 4,890 sats inside this UTXO. So let's imagine I want to send this one here. So I've unfrozen it, 7,526 sats. But I really want it to be 10,000. I'm just happy with the number 10,000. It's nice. I want to keep everything in order as well. So what I would do is unfreeze the ones, the fees that I need to, or the, the one that I've labeled. Make sure you label these as well. So make sure I unfreeze the one that I want to send for fees. Select both, send uh, selected. Now, it's already filled out my address to pay to. That's completely fine. But there's a couple of things we're going to run over. So as I said before, you've got your first in, first out. Now, if we sent our first in, first out, it would mean it's using the one that I want for fees as the first in, first out. So let's just, it's a funny thing that if you just change these numbers and mess them around, they like it does weird things. So um, just keep on playing around with it. So lucky we've labeled everything because remember once again, first in is our NPC and first out to the receiving address will be the NPC. Now, what you've noticed here is it's combined both of them to go into this one here. So total is 11,216. And then the fees is just the remainder. So all it's done here is stacked this one, actually. And we might even just try and quickly uh, show an example of this here. So what it's done is if this NPC is at the top here, the inscription is still at the top and it'll be the first out. And the BTC for fees, there was no inscriptions on them, so it just looked like this. And then when it combines them, it will just end up looking, uh, end up looking like this. So our new inscription, the output that's receiving here, it will just have two different ranges inside of it instead of the one that I had previously. So don't think about that stuff too much. The main thing that you want to do is make sure. Your NPC is at the top, it's in the input, and then it's the well, it has to be the first on the output as well. So if we were to go create transaction, and this is where like it shouldn't cause any issues for now, but I'll explain where it might have been issue if you're doing multiple things at once. So NPC's first in and it's first out, 11,000 sats, and then it would appear like this when you get it to your wallet. But remember, first in, it says zero, so it's gonna be first out. Now, the other thing is, let's imagine I had sent, so imagine this was, you know, 20,000 sats and I really don't need all of it combined together. So I really don't need this to be, uh, you know, 34,000 sats or whatever it would be. So what I would do then is I'm going to add another output. So remember, we've got two inputs. We selected that before and we can change how many outputs there are as well. So I might go that I want to send... So this address here, I want to send the remaining of this, after we've padded it to 10,000, I will send the remaining of this back to the same wallet so I can use it in the future. So what I'm going to do is paste that address in and then we'll go number two return. And we're just going to go, uh, actually we'll go back to this one here. So, and I'll explain this in a second. So, all right, so before we had and you'll notice how it's changed its order, so you've got to keep on playing with things. Cool. So before, what we had was, and just making sure all my addresses for the first one are, oops, mobbing. Cool. 
So before what we had, we only had a two, in, two inputs, one output, so it's very simple. Um, but now we're gonna look at what would happen if my output, I only wanted this to be at 10,000 in my wallet, so padded back up to 10,000, and the remaining I want to get sent back to me. So it is quite simple again, start the same way you did before, where you add in your uh, address to send it to, but you're specifying that you want this address to only receive 10,000 sats from that transaction. Now, once again, it's first in, first out. So these are stacked together, first in, first out. So what will happen is your 7,526 from this one here will be here. And then what it tells you is you've only said, hey, I only want 10,000 sent out to that address. So it pads it back up to 10,000 and it takes it from this next one here because that is where it needs to get it from. So 7,526 from here and the remaining 2,000, uh, 400 and something from here as well. So first in, first out, first in, first out. So we'll stack it there. And then the remaining sats, because you haven't used the total for these two together, the remaining amount is 1,216. I've then said the second output, so one, two. I want the second output to be the max, so the max of the remaining ones there to be sent back to this same wallet that I'm in right now. So you only have to worry about this if you do want to pad your um, sats, uh, pad your UTXOs back up to a, a certain range. And then what we want to do is create transaction. Now this is very important and you'll see why, because it's first in, first out, but what's happened here? It's actually changed the order. So it's annoying Sparrow does this, um, but the thing to think about is that if you looked at this and went, and in your mind when you're doing it, go through this process if you knew, you go first in, oh, why would it be going back to this same address? So you get out of here and it's an issue with uh, Sparrow. Cool. And so all I did was cancel that and then go back and then eventually ordered itself right. So first in, first out. So we've got our 7,526 sats. I know my, my inscription is at the start of it because I already checked before by looking at kind of this offset zero. And it's going first in and then first out. And I know it's 10,000 in total, it takes 7,526 from here. And then the remaining, it takes from this one here. So 10,000 in total. And then next place in line, because I tell it, oh, you have to use all of your, when you have your inputs, you have to use all of them in one way. So it goes 10,000 there, and then the remaining will be sent back to this address I'm in, because hey, I might want to use it in the future. And then you finalize, sign, and then there'll be another UTX. So uh, at this address, that kind of looks like you know, this here, and then there'll be another UTXO back at this address. Uh, that is a, a brand new UTXO with its own range as well. Cool, well, I hope that wasn't too complicated. Um, I think the biggest thing to understand to your mind is how UTXOs work. So a UTXO is a potential range of sats. So ranges, it could be two, could be three, could be four. It doesn't really matter. The thing that you need to remember is that your ordinal lives at offset zero, or should do. Make sure you check to make sure someone's actually set it up correctly. So your inscription should live at uh, the, the offset zero. And then the rest of it could just be random stats here. And as long as when you're transacting, you're not ac accidentally spending this one here, or there's an, yeah, and that's like when you get down to maybe a thousand, I'm oh, sorry, when you get down to under 5,000, that's when you ne really need to start be paying a lot more attention. Pay attention always, but that's just the uh, the kind of extra attention there.